Do you think I'm a micromanager? On some things, yes. On some things, no. Do you think I'm a micromanager? No, I, I mean, think it depends on what it is. You're pretty good about balancing that because some things have to be micromanaged depending on the circumstance. Well, when I drilled oil wells, I bet you everybody was like, I'm a micromanager. But I wasn't a micromanager. I started off the same way you started off. Like you get a job and you're young and you understand a good portion of what needs to happen and how it needs to happen, but you don't understand every everything about the job. So you have to go learn from the people that you're going to supervise. And so for me, that was directional drilling. Like I never sat in a driller's chair with a directional driller behind me. Um, I had, I, I got to co company man, consultant, and didn't understand their directional drilling job at all. Because when you're a rig manager, you don't mess with directional drillers. Right. You don't have no, you don't have any reason to talk to them. You talk to the mud engineers a little bit because they're out there on the pits and you're doing the mixing. And and when you work Derek's, you work with the mud engineer a lot, so you understand a little a little about mud, enough about mud, but still a blind spot for you that you got to learn why and how. But on directional drilling, it was like I'm completely lost of how and why they run their equipment the way they do, like what the what the upper limits of their equipment are. And everything else. So when I got to South Texas, I was on a rig and we pissed off my boss. And my lead, I was working nights and my lead was mad and he wanted to break something. So he wanted to tear up their equipment to where you want to tear up the directional drillers equipment. So the differential pressure is like you got. He wanted to break it on purpose? Yeah, he wanted to break it Why? on purpose. To prove a point. Oh, you know, to, to, to show what happens. Let's just shut down production so we get a few days off. No, 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 not a few days off. You don't get days off. He wanted, like, once somebody, we had an issue, and, and it held us back, okay? And so the, the idea was we'll catch up. We'll catch up by running on this shit to its maximum allowable variables, like the maximum allowable tolerance that this equipment can handle. We'll run on it that hard. And then when something breaks, because we're trying to go so hard, we can point it back at our boss and say, see, this is what happens when you get in a hurry, right? And and that was his idea, right? But here's the other thing. He's got me working knots and I'm new. So whose fault is it going to be? Yours. Yeah. He, he ain't going to take credit. He tells me what to do. He knows I'm going to go do it. What he didn't anticipate was the equipment wouldn't break. Now, now he's got a new drilling schedule. Oh yeah, we re, <laughs> we re, we <laughs> we sucks. I, like like. Did the, you know that's what happens in that situation? They're like, oh, what? this is what y'all are capable of. Okay, cool. This, yeah, Keep so doing it was it. taking thirty days to drill these wells. Like, thirty. So we had a really good job. Like we got to pussyfoot around, right? And take because that's what days. everybody expected. Yeah, and take thirty days to drill. Takes a thirty well. days to drill a well. When 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 my dude was like, here's what I want you to do. I went over to talk to the directional hands and I was like, this is what we're going to do. So differential pressure. So you got a bit and, and you're pumping, pumping fluid through the inside of the pipe, the mud motors on the bottom and it's and the fluid, it's got a turbine in there of some sort and it turns the bit even without the pipe turning. Hmm. So if you're pumping, you know, 500 gallons a minute or 600 gallons a minute or whatever it is, you got a, pr a limited amount of pressure on the surface. That's going to limit you. You got a, a, a minimum number of gallons per minute. You got to pump through the bit. And then you got what's called differential pressure, which when you set that bit on bottom and it starts meeting the dirt, it's going the pressure is going to rise because now it's got back sure. pressure. Back pressure plus the weight of the stack. Of well, the, yeah, yeah. So so the d typical differential pressure we drilled water, with was two to 300 PSI. The motor was rated for 800. So you could go up to 800. But we drilled with two or three hundred. Sure. And then your S surface save pressure. Save equipment. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you know, if you tear it up, you're gonna have trip pipe, and that's expensive. And you know, you don't want to do trip that. Trip pipes pulling it out, right? Pull it, you got to pull the bit all the way out, <laughs> change the mud motor out, put a new one on. So they don't want to do that. So, bang, <laughs> we take off. That's so stupid. <laughs> and, and and so I'm like, what's the maximum amount of and, pressure you can put on this differential pressure? Can, He's like, the motor's rated for eight hundred. I'm like, we're gonna run eight hundred. He's like, bullshit. And I'm like, we're going to run 800. He's like, you're going to have to call my boss. I'm not going to do that. And I was like, well, give me your boss's number. I'm like, hey, we're running 800 PSI on this mud motor to drill the tangent. If this guy ain't going to do it, get me somebody out here who will. And we stood on that thing. 
And in my 12 hour shift, we did 4,000 foot. But that thing at rated 800 probably has a two, at least a 2x safety factor, probably but, a 2.5. Well, they, they rebuilt them. In, right, they're, they're, but they still have to build them with a safety factor. Yeah, but they rebuild them so many times. It's just anything can break on those things. Sure, it ain't. It don't matter if you're running two hundred pounds or eight hundred pounds. If it's gonna break, it's gonna fucking break. That's that's so, what we learned about the equipment. Plate. So so what's what's really fucked up about this that you don't know is now his boss that told him this has to come back to a new schedule that because the new guy flipped it off, and the new guy gets all the credit for the extra production, and. Now he looks like an asshole for dragging his feet for all this time. The old boss. Yes. So like, so so, like... so like so now I'm in this situation where I got this got this guy. He goes to bed, <laughs> and we're we, you start off drilling you the plug. Wake and you gotta up go slow with your dick kicked in. And we we drilled four thousand feet. We we had these. So all of our cuttings, it's oil base. So it's got it's drilled with diesel, and the dirt that's coming out of the ground gets mixed with the diesel and oil, and it and it it's got to go in these um these um, they're like our dump trailers. They're like they're like the little things that you set out. The what are they called? Uh, I can't remember what they are. Uh, it's a it's a frack tank. No, yeah, it's, but it's, a, a frack tank. It, it's it's a big dumpster. Is all it is. No, it, it is a dumpster. It's a roll off. Yeah, they they so but so, it, but they're different. It is a little different. It is a roll off, but it's no, no, it's the exact higher. same thing. It's yeah. a roll off. Like our cuttings went into the roll offs, right? Because they didn't want to get oil based on the so ground. So you filled up all the roll offs. So so they, they we had two companies worth of roll offs out there because we'd fired one company, and hired another one, but the new company or the old company hadn't come and got the roll offs. Oh, that's so much. So, good. so so now you don't have enough for the next morning. Oh no no no! It's even worse than that. So so the roll offs you you've got a guy sitting there on like a mini X, and he's just loading it into trucks, and the trucks got to go, and they come they turn around and come back, and you and you call one. Like when you're drilling under normal circumstances, you don't you don't need one, but every I don't know, maybe five or six hours you need another truck. Well, we normally make about eight hundred foot in a tower. We made four thousand. We, like I was, I didn't realize how many how many trucks we were going to need. So I had trucks coming and trucks turning, but you got to like you got to tell the trucking company like, hey, tonight I'm going to need two trucks on me all night. I'm going to need. Three right. trucks on me all night if you're going to do a high volume sure. of something. You didn't have I, enough trucks. I could not get trucks. I'm calling everybody. I could not get trucks. So I'm just filling off roll-offs and hauling them off to the side. I'm throwing another one underneath there and just dragging it off to the side. I got two companies worth of roll-offs full of cuttings and an army of trucks on the way by the time he gets there. So not only did he come on and we had drilled you know, half of the tangent already, but he got there and he was – Pretty much completely out of roll-offs and had a line of trucks out there. So he had a whole bunch of work because, you know, trucking is coming in and out, signing Did tickets. he drop the pressure on it? Yeah. No. 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 We, we, he stood on it. We stood on it. We, we, I got that plaque. I put it, it's on my Facebook. We set a record that well. I would draw it in 10 days. So we drove that whole well in 10 days. Oh, and that sucks though. <laughs> well, it did suck, but we took a field from 30 days to 10 days and made it the new normal. And, um, and, and that, Guys, like like whether or not anybody, and, and nobody's gonna look at that and go, oh well, yeah, that's what happened. Like I, I don't give a shit. It's the rig number was Archer Eleven. It was a new rig. Um, I can tell you the bit we used. I was there, and and we we did it with an Ultera bit, in in the Eagleford shell. Took them down to ten days. Um, set the new standard for for that, and then then once I got my own gig, you know what I mean. I didn't, I was like, I would get new guys in there, new, new directional drillers. And I would be like, look, here's how, here's how a well works. You've got, you've got a formation and it's top to bottom. It's, it's this thick. So that's called your window. Right. So you might be able to go 10 foot high and 10 foot low. Right. But you're going to keep it right here. And then typically on, I mean, a 20 foot window is pretty normal. So 10 foot high and 10 foot low. This is the line they want, but 10 high, 10 low. That's it right and left would be about 25 foot. Okay. So, you, so it'd be a 50 foot window right and left. So say your line that you're going to be drilling the two seventies West. So say you're going to be drilling 280. All right. So you're going to hold it at 280 and you got to do a 90.5 inclination or 91 inclination. So, and you've got that 25 foot window. Well, people would do what's Why called. Why would you be to, doing an inclination? Because that's the way the formation lays. Oh, okay. So it's, you're, you're, you're just staying in one it. formation. I guess. And that's it. 
and as long as your gamma hangs in there, which means you're still in that formation. <clears throat> like so it's, you, just for everybody, like you, inclination, you know that, right? Inclination, declination. Yeah, like it's incline, decline. So the yes. formation's moving up. That makes sense. That's it. And and so that's your pay dirt, right? And people will do what's called trying to paint the line. So they're just trying to stay right in the middle of that. And I wouldn't. I would be like, look, if if the target line's 280 and we get a survey back that says it's 277, we're three degrees out of inclination, which means every hundred foot you drill, for every degree you're out of inclination, you move the bit from where it was to 1.75 feet over per degree of inclination. What's 1.75 times three? We'll just round up. Six foot. Three and a half. Yeah. Six Roughly foot. six foot. I mean, it's less than six foot, but it's, it's 5.25. 5.25. So you get that and you're three degrees out of inclination. So you move 5.25 foot over. How long can I drill in this? Well, you're already swinging back. Well, I'm going this way. I'm going left, yeah. and I'm and I'm on the line, and I got a 25 foot left hand window. I can stay over there for a while. You know what I mean? I can stay over there. Yeah, for but you, so you're foot. just snaking your way I, back I, and forth. I can stay over there for 500 <laughs> foot, and then and then, well, not maybe not 500 foot, but 400 foot. I can stay over there. Well, by the time you cross then, the median again, you start turning. And then I got to correct it. Yeah. So what they would do is they would come out and they would slide. You know, they do these little five and six foot slides, 10 foot slides to try to correct that right then at that moment. I'd be like, fuck that. You get to the outer banks of the window and then you do a big, you know, 15 foot, 20 foot slide and you send her back the other way. And we'll go all the way over to the other fucking side of it. And then. <laughs> I mean, we'll, it probably is not that much extra pipe when you really look at it. it at the end of the day, foot. the rig rate, it, everything on locations costs you eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a day. Right. Um, a couple of joints of extra pipe because you drilled a little bit longer hole. It actually going to increase your uh, your production zone. I don't know, but they, they and and they'd be like, "Well, you got to get pipe in there," and I'd be like, "That's my problem, not yours." But the other thing you'll learn is, or at least what I learned, is I it want, would it would walk three degrees and then it would walk three degrees back the other way, and your and your up and down window was tighter because you had to stay in the formation. So we'd monitor it a little tighter. But I mean, that thing would walk, and you would you would sometimes rotate. Well, it's just natural too. So instead of sliding every two stands or sliding every three stands, we would drill 20 stands and never have to slide. So we, we ended up, um, I mean, the way, and, and directional drillers hated it. They were like, you're micromanaging, you're over here, you need to stay over there in your trailer, you don't need to be over here doing, doing all this. And I'd be like, nah, bro, like, you call me for permission to slide. You let me know if you think you need to slide, and I'll let you know if you can. <laughs> They'd be like, fuck you. And, and dude, keep in mind, this is coming from a 26-year-old, too. Yeah, like, well, I can't imagine a more cocky Corey Thompson. Oh, it was, it was, it was on. But, but I didn't, I didn't sleep. Like, I slept, but I napped. So I would take naps just throughout the day, and I would stay out there. I mean, I would make all these little projects, because otherwise it was torture being there. Sure. Like, it was, it was, you couldn't leave. You couldn't leave location. You couldn't go eat. Whatever groceries you brought were all you had.